And one member of that uh, crew of five is, is probably feeling a little more uh, pressure than the others simply because we are watching her so carefully. Uh, we are finally, uh, at long last, America sending a woman into space. It uh, certainly took us a long time. But have we really come a long way? We ask some people. Men don't necessarily have a market on outer space. The basic requirements for an astronaut is probably intelligence, not physical strength. It doesn't really matter what sex it is, as long as we advance. It's a lot of progress for our country. An American woman gets to go up in space. We finally got around to having one. We're, we're getting right up there with all the big boys. Sure, a woman going up, that's great. Kind of behind the times. It should have been done 10 years ago. Certainly their health is better. They live longer. Why not fly? Dr. Well, I think she's getting a lot of more credit than, she, than any other astronaut just because she's a woman. I feel it's a, a great privilege for women, as long as a man goes up with her, though. I think it's up to a man to do this. Keep the women downstairs where they belong. <laughs> I think that's just start of the kitchen. I think they definitely belong there. I wish I was going up with her. And a doorman now, if they can do anything. Uh, is it possible that they're, they're trying to uh, see if, uh, uh, like sex, for instance? Women get a chance to prove themselves. So she doesn't mess it up for us all. Charlie, you're doing it for all the women and for my grandchild to come and making a better world. You worked your tail off to, to get there and just keep working at it. Go for it. We're all behind you. <laughs> right on, Sally. Sally, you're a star, and remember that. In a moment, we'll find out why Camden, New Jersey, is sending ants into space. And when we come back, we expect to uh, be able to announce a go for launch. First, a message. Non-essential personnel have cleared the launch danger area and has been assured that the closeout crews have cleared the roadblocks. Just entered a countdown milestone. The Challenger is in its last 10-minute holding pattern. And here's CNN Science Editor Kevin Sanders in New York with more. Uh, thank you, Rick. Uh, here we are with Jack Lausma, our expert throughout this uh, six, seventh mission. You were on uh, Shuttle 3, and at this point, with about 18 minutes to go, I think, before the, uh, the scheduled launch, um, what's happening in the cabin? Are you just sort of sitting, waiting, twiddling your thumbs, or a lot of work to be done at this stage? Still? No, no, at this point, everything is uh, pretty well ironed out, and uh, things are hopefully running smoothly. You have a few uh, odds and ends that you have to take care of. Uh, listening to the uh, controllers on the loop uh, give you some instructions, but basically it's just uh, pondering what's about to happen and getting your mind ready to uh, react uh, when things go right and if they don't. Well, back in what I guess can almost be said to be the early days, uh, Shuttle 3, uh, it was a two-person crew then, That's right. you and Bulletin. Mm -hmm. um, is it easier with five or, uh, or more complicated with five? I think what? it's easier with five, Kevin. Uh, it gives you two more people looking over your shoulder uh, to help you uh, go through the checklist. If you get distracted with uh, problems that arise, they can keep things on the track, and uh, I think it's easier. Uh, and at this stage, I guess the only thing anybody's looking at is the weather, and that doesn't seem to be a problem either, right? A few low clouds, but not bad. Um, well, here we are uh, answering our question. Um, I don't know what we can see from that in terms of the weather. It's, it's, uh, it's a little cloudy there. Is that going to affect whatever it is we see or do not see from the actual launch itself? I wonder. It could. As the uh, bird goes through the cloud layer, of course, we could lose it. It all depends on the angle of the cameras and uh, how dense the clouds are. We'll just have to wait and see. So um, at this stage, of course, the pace of the events are quickening, even though it's not obvious from the picture, which in fact uh, looks quite desolate, because uh, at this point, of course, at this stage of uh, preparation for a launch, uh, everybody has uh, moved away from the area for some miles. The closest uh, people other than the crew are about a mile away. Uh, they're a rescue team, and uh, the crew is up there by themselves. The uh, white room is about to uh, be swung away, clearing the shuttle for a vertical launch uh, right past the tower. So they're out by themselves. Now, Crippen's in the cockpit. Young, apparently, is, uh, as usual, checking out the, uh, the landing situation. Is that right? John Young is out flying the uh, shuttle training airplane, making approaches to the runway at the Cape there to ensure that the weather is still acceptable for landing in the event we have to come back and make a return to our launch site. Well, uh, we are hearing in the background there the uh, now familiar voice of Hugh Harris of Mission Control, and he can bring us up to date with exactly what's going on now as we are watching this scene now at the Kennedy in preparation for the 733 Eastern Standard Time launch of Shuttle 7 today. 
Of the seven uh, getaway specials, there's a series of five experiments selected in a nationwide competition among high school students in West Germany, sponsored by the Kaiser Threta organization, a small aerospace company. Three experiments are from Purdue University. There are two experiments by the California Institute of Technology. Uh, one of the things we uh, may have... Launch Director Al, uh, Al O'Hara has spoken to the crew and now Dick Smith speaking to them, saying that he hopes that they have a, a safe trip and Godspeed and that we'll have a red carpet uh, rolled out for them when they return. As I was saying, there's a big contingent of foreign journalists for this uh, mission, particularly uh, Indonesia, uh, uh, Canada, and Germany. It is very much an international mission, this one, right, Jack? It certainly is, uh, in addition to uh, those from several other European countries, from the European Space Agency, they're represented as well. Nine minutes and holding, uh, looking for a liftoff on time at 7.33 this morning. This is shuttle launch control. Now, uh, Hugh just announced that there is a nine-minute hold. We're in a nine-minute hold now. Uh, this is the, uh, the last chance to make whatever modifications, adjustments, or refinements before the actual final countdown, don't I? Well, actually, we can go into a hold at any time, uh, Kevin. Uh, this is the uh, place where you'd like things to go smoothly from here on, because um, if we have to turn around, it would take us a, a whole day to do so at this point. And, um, so now we're in a 10-minute hold, uh, and uh, it'll be picked up very shortly, uh, starting at nine minutes, counting on down. The crew is using a checklist, uh, much like the one you see here, and uh, they're being assisted through it by the uh, ground controllers. And uh, this is uh, like the book that they'll be using to uh, get through the first uh, hour and a half of flight. We were uh, marveling, I guess is the word, a little while back at the fact this is undoubtedly the most advanced, complicated, sophisticated, massive technological achievement in history. I, I don't think that's an exaggeration, is it? I think this is probably the most complex, um, sophisticated machine that has been ever put together in one place by people. I think also another remarkable aspect, and perhaps less obviously noticed, is the fact that uh, here you and I sitting here with a checklist, uh, talking to uh, our viewers, as are all the other uh, television stations around the world, watching this live as it happens. Um, that's a remarkable achievement of communications, which in turn has been made possible to some extent by the very operations of the shuttles thus far putting up those satellites. That's true. With these, uh, in fact, two of the satellites are going to be put up on this flight, one today and one tomorrow, uh, altitude of 22,300 miles in the so-called synchronous orbit, one over the Pacific and uh, one over uh, Southeast Asia. And uh, again, adding two more to this uh, fleet of uh, satellites, which is allowing us to be transmitted and heard around the world. Does the success, uh, apparent success of the, uh, this, the, the uh, Ariane, the French, launch yesterday. Um, does that heighten the sense of competition between the uh, space nations, particularly between the United States and uh, France, European Space Agency, for the kind of commercial payloads, two of which you've just mentioned? I don't think it really heightens the uh, sense of competition. Uh, I believe that we're all in this together and encouraging one another. Uh, there is plenty of business, that appears to me, for everybody uh, on down the line. So we want to encourage success, and we're uh, certainly proud of the uh, performance of the Ariane yesterday. Anyway, we're going to pick up uh, the countdown very soon. Uh, we are still in that uh, built-in hold. We'll be back in just a moment to continue our live coverage of uh, the seventh mission of the shuttle. Biology, chemistry, you know, physics, and the computer sciences, too. And what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> when I grow up, uh, an engineer, hopefully. Yeah. Pleasure? I hope you'd like to go into uh, communications. Being in orbit 81, has given me the chance to speak to various organizations, schools, businesses, and I just love to talk and I love to meet people. It's rather changed your life then. Yes, it has. Yeah. Well, we hope the astronauts do real well by you, and congratulations. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be watching, certainly. Well, the launch countdown is about to resume. We'll uh, bring the latest to you in a moment. First, a message. Test personnel on the ground monitor the systems. At T-minus four minutes, a purge of the main engines will start.